so in the previous classes we have been discussing the architecture of msp430 series of microcontrollers okay so today let us study the functional block diagram of msp430 f2013 so this msp here it stands for mixed signal processor that means this msp430 series of microcontrollers designed by texas instruments they are capable of handling both digital as well as analog signals okay so let us study the block diagram of msp430 f2013 microcontroller as you can see in the block diagram there are various blocks available so this block here basic block system generation block so when an external crystal is connected to this block here x in and x out this basic clock generation system generates three different types of clocks internally they are called as master clock mclk so this master clock is used by the processor for executing the instructions okay so this mclk master clock which is generated by this clock generation system is used by the processor mainly for its execution and the other two types of clocks that are generated are it is one of one of them is called as auxiliary clock aclk other one is sub master clock smclk okay so this aclk and smclk they will be used by the peripherals for their operation okay so these are the three different types of clocks that will be generated internally in the msp430 series of microcontrollers mclk master clock aclk auxiliary clock smclk sub master clock and remember this mclk will be used by the processor for its processing okay then here we have two different types of memories one for storing the uh, code and one for st storing the data temporarily so this msp f uh, 2013 this microcontroller has two kilo two kilobytes of flash memory so that is used for storing the program or the code memory and it has also 128 bytes of ram for temporary data storage during the program execution so these are the two memories available inside this msp 430f2030 okay then this microcontroller also has a 16 bit sigma delta based a to d conversion okay there is an a to d converter built in inside this microcontroller so it is an 16 bit a to d converter that means whenever i give an analog input that will be converted to appropriate okay 16 bit digital output and that will be provided by this a to d converter and this a to d converter is based on sigma delta method for data conversion from analog to digital okay then as you can see in the last two blocks here okay there are two ports available inside this f2013 microcontroller one is called as port p1 other one is port p2 okay so this port p1 has eight pins p1.0 to p1.8 so that is shown here eight okay so eight pins are available for this port p1 okay from p1.0 to p1.7 that is eight pins are available okay and in this port p2 only two pins are available for the user that is p2.6 and p2.7 okay that is why only two is written here that means only two pins are available for the user okay whereas out of the in this port p1 eight pins are available for the user and also remember here the port p1 pins are multiplexed for port pin operation as well as for the jtag function okay as you can see here so these eight pins are written as p1.x and jtag that means some of the pins of this port p1 either they can be used as port pins of port p1 or they can be used for jtag operation okay so that is why they are multiplexed for this both the functions and here the p2 port p2 pins are multiplexed for either port p2 operation or they can be used for connecting the external crystal x in and x out which is shown here x in and x out okay so that is used for the internal clock generation we can connect an external crystal between these pins x in and x out okay so remember in this msp 430f2013 there are two ports port p1 and port p2 okay so this port p1 has eight pins whereas this port p2 has only two pins p2.6 and p2.7 okay then this is the processor 16 bit processor okay cpu so here this mab this is the memory address bus okay where the addresses are placed on this bus okay between different memories and different peripherals 
the address is placed on this memory address bus and we have memory data bus where data is transferred between the processor and the different memories and the various peripherals which are present inside MSP 430F2013 okay and at the bottom here we have a watchdog timer okay it is a 16 bit watchdog timer the main function of this watchdog timer is to reset the microcontroller whenever this processor is stuck in between some uh, infinite loop so when the processor is unable to process or proceed further due to some error then if this watchdog timer is enabled then this watchdog timer once the counter is timed out okay when this watchdog timer times out it is going to reset the your processor okay so that the processor will come out of that infinite loop or whatever the error it is facing it will come out of that loop or error okay so this is one of the safety features that is available inside this msp430 series of microcontrollers and also we have the timer that is called as a2 okay so this is used for time delay generation okay so there is a timer available and also in this microcontroller this there is a facility available for serial data communication either by using spi serial peripheral interface or i square c bus okay so serial data communication can takes place be, take place between this microcontroller and the external devices or peripherals by using the serial interface okay so universal serial interface usi okay and there is one more block that is called as brownout protection okay the main function of this block is this, this circuit keeps on monitoring the supply voltage here vcc okay which is given to this controller okay whenever the supply voltage comes below some threshold fixed threshold then the processor will be reset by this brownout detector so when the voltage this supply voltage goes down below the predetermined threshold voltage the processor should not be allowed to continue its operation or memory should not be altered during that time because at this low voltage which is less than the threshold voltage if the processor starts execution or the data is altered in the memory then the memory may be corrupted okay for that reason the processor should be prevented from continuing its operation and that is taken care of by this brownout protection circuit okay so this is going to prevent the processor from executing the instructions or accessing the memory whenever the supply voltage is less than the predetermined threshold voltage okay at the when the voltage becomes less than the threshold voltage okay so this circuit here it is going to reset or it is going to maintain the reset on this processor okay the processor will be kept in the reset state so whenever this voltage goes above this threshold voltage minimum threshold voltage then this circuit brownout detection brownout protection circuit will remove that reset signal from the processor and the processor can continue its normal operation okay and here we have jtag interface and spy by wire interface so this jtag is mainly jtag interface is mainly used for uh, downloading the program which is written in the pc to the this microcontroller okay okay for programming this ic okay so we need one interface that is called as jtag interface that is shown here and the same function that is programming this ic can be done either by using this jtag interface or by using only a two wire system that is called as spy by wire by means two wires okay so by using either spy by wire interface or by using jtag interface the user can load his program from the computer to this controller microcontroller okay that is used for this function that is jtag interface or the spy by wire interface okay so here there is one pin shown here reset bar slash nmi okay so it is used for either resetting the processor or the same pin can be used for interrupt input that is non maskable interrupt input okay so this is the block diagram of the functional block diagram of msp430 f2013 one of the microcontrollers in the msp430 series okay next let us study about the central processing unit of this msp430 f2013 microcontroller okay so as you can see here okay so this is the central processing unit okay this central processing unit is based on the risk architecture that is reduced instruction set architecture okay that is it has only limited number of instructions okay so actually there are 27 native instructions plus 24 emulated instructions so totally there are 51 instructions available for this msp430 f2013 or any msp430 microcontroller there are totally 
51 instructions available okay so 27 native instructions original instructions and uh, with 24 additional emulated instructions totally there are 27 uh, 51 uh, instructions available and this is a set of registers that is available in the cpu this cpu has a 16 bit alu as you can see here okay arithmetic and logical unit it is a 16 bit alu which can perform operations on a 16 bit data okay and the same set of registers is shown, shown here for the clarity okay so there are totally r02 r15 there are totally 16 registers okay available in the central processing unit okay now the first four registers r02 r3 so they have some alternative functions as well this r0 can be used as the program pointer this r1 can be used as a stack pointer this R2 can be used as a status register, whereas this R3 can be used as the constant generator. The remaining registers from R4 to R15, they are used for general purpose. They are used as general purpose registers for data storage and data manipulation during programming. Okay, But the first four registers, they are usually used for these predetermined functions. Okay, So this register R0 is used as the program counter, as you can see a program counter. So program counter, what it does? This program counter it holds the address of the next instruction that has to be executed by the processor okay so this program counter contains a memory address so from where the processor is going to fetch the next instruction so as you can see here the lsp of this program counter is hard wired to bit zero that is the lsp bit of this program counter is always zero that means the address that is loaded here into this program counter will be always an even address okay because remember in this ms 430 microcontrollers each instruction will be stored in the memory at the even address so for that reason the lsp bit of this program counter is always set equal to zero so it is hardwired so it is whatever the address you are going to fetch into pc the lsp bit will be always zero okay so that is program counter the next one is stack pointer okay so the stack pointer is used to access the stack so with the help of this stack pointer the user can access the stack in his program okay so again as you can see here the lsp bit of this stack pointer is again hardwired to zero that means whatever the address that is going to be placed inside the stack pointer it is an even address okay the stack is also an even address the stack pointer address is an even address the program counter address is also an even address okay and the next register r2 okay it is used for status 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 register function that means during whenever the instructions are executed there will be some flags updated by the cpu such as the zero flag the carry flag overflow flag native flag okay so these flags are present inside this status register so these flags which are updated during the execution of instructions okay these flags will be updated by the this cpu or the alu and those will be present inside this status register okay so this r2 register will be used as the status register and this fourth register that is r3 this is used as the constant generator okay so constant generator is used for certain addressing modes to generate some predetermined integer values okay so whenever i use that particular addressing mode the particular constant will be generated by this constant generator register automatically Okay. So, this eases writing the um, instruction during using by using different addressing modes. So, the remaining registers R4 to R15, they can be used for storing the data. Okay. They are used as general purpose registers from R4 to R15. But whereas the first four registers, okay, either they can be used for storing the data or for these alternative functions, but usually they will be used for these predetermined functions okay r0 will be used as the program counter r1 will be used as the stack pointer this r2 register will be used for status register function which contains different flags here okay and also it indicates the status of the processor okay current status of the processor this r3 will be used for constant generator function okay so and also as you can see in the cpu the registers are interfaced to the 16 bit address bus and a 16 bit data bus okay so all the peripherals which are outside the cpu and other units in the microcontroller msb430 microcontroller okay 
they are connected to this cpu by with the help of this 16 bit memory address bus and a 16 bit data bus okay so remember this msv430 series microcontroller it has a built in 16 bit alu which can handle 16 bit data okay okay as you can see here the mclk is given to this processor okay master clock is given to the processor and after processing the instructions these flags will be updated and which are stored in this status register okay so the cpu of msb430 microcontroller is based on risk architecture reduced instruction set architecture okay it has uh, the cpu of the msb430 f2030 microcontroller is a 16 bit it has 16 bit alu okay so internally for executing every instruction the MSC430 microcontroller it uses a three stage pipeline pipeline to speed up the program execution okay the MSC430 F2013 microcontroller uses a three staged pipeline for the uh, instruction execution okay then as you just now saw the CPUs integrated with 16 resistors there are 16 resistors from R0 to R15 okay all the peripherals are connected to the CPU by using the data bus, address bus and the control buses. Okay. And there are 51 instructions okay, in the MSB430 F2013, out of which 27 are native instructions and 24 are emulated instructions. So totally it comes out to be 51 instructions. Okay. So this is about the central processing unit of MSB430 F2013 microcontroller. Okay. Thank you.